joining us uh, this morning, um, or I guess it should be the, this afternoon, right? <laughs> um, excuse me. Uh, I So this presentation is really kind of meant to take us kind of day by day through the trip, through our trip through Athens, all the ports that we're going to visit on the cruise, everything else like that. But really kind of before we do that, I, I wanted to talk about, um, well, gosh, just what the climate is right now. And and what some of the what some of the things are are like, and right now um, in Greece they they have not uh, uh, officially opened. They're opening uh, May fifteenth, and 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 May fifteenth is really going to be kind of their their the day open, so so to speak. What 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 we have, um, and basically what what we do know at this point is that if you're fully vaccinated. You don't need to um, take a test or or anything like that to come into Greece to travel. Uh, there there'll be no restrictions um, moving around the country. Uh, masks, of course, uh, are still going to be um, expected to to be in use. Um, but restaurants, for example, and cafes are opening on May third um, for outdoor seating, and then and it's and it's just going to continue. Uh, the, the the one thing that I will say right now, currently, um, the CDC, our, our state department is requiring, and, and just because I want to say this just for, so everyone can, and of course, we'll look at it yourself, but just so everyone can kind of get an understanding of right now, what the situation is, the CDC is asking whether you're vaccinated or not, that you'll need to be uh uh, be, you, you'll have to take a basically a COVID test three days um, or up, up, up to, I should say, up to three days before you fly home and before you leave. And that'll be, that's uh, checked at the airline and, and the airlines will, will kind of help it, administer that. But right now that's currently what the CDC is saying. So I want to, I want to, Put that out there just so everybody's completely aware. Um, but when, when we fly over to Greece again, well, you you'll need a well, of course, um, the the proof of the vaccination. So so we'll want to make sure we have our vaccination cards with us. Um, but beyond that, getting into Greece, you're going to be met by our tour guide at the Athens airport. Um, literally, when you come through customs uh, with your luggage. Our guide is going to be waiting there for you with a sign. Um, you'll, you'll all go to go to your guide. There'll be a bus waiting for you just outside uh, the terminal there, and and then load everything on the bus and off we go um, into Athens. Uh, you know, it's important to note that that when you arrive in Athens that day, there uh, there's not going to be any touring that day. We'll actually just going to come in at Athens, get comfortable, get checked into our hotel, and then our the next day is when our kind of our touring will will begin. Um, if here, let me change the slide here. It, if you've looked at a calendar, you you might have noticed that we're leaving on a on a on a Thursday, which means we're going to get into Athens on a Friday. And remember that Friday, we're just going to get acquainted with the hotel, get checked in, get comfortable. Touring is going to start on Saturday, and that's when we'll have our full tour of Athens. That'll be on Saturday, and it's a great time to go. We'll talk about it. But when you check in, right now we've um, the Amelia Hotel. We we have two contracts right now, um, and certainly before you leave. But I'm guessing within. In, in the next three months or, or excuse me, yeah, within the next three months or so, I should be able to let uh, Lynn and, and, and the chamber know who exactly, um, or I, I should say where exactly you'll all be staying, whether it'll be at the Amelia Hotel or the Marriott Hotel. Um, we will not split the group. Every from Everyone from the Howard County Chamber will stay in one of these hotels, just don't know which one yet. Um, the, the both. Excellently, uh, both are really nice hotels. Um, great locations. The Amelia is uh, within walking distance. Literally, it's probably within about a 
10 or 15 minute walk to the Parthenon. Um, Athens, the, the uh, Marriott Athens Hotel is a little further. You could walk there, but it would be more of a, 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 of a, of a hike, or I should say a hike, but it would probably take you in the neighborhood of 30, 30 to 35 minutes, something like that if you were walking. Just kind of quick lobbies. This is of course where we're gonna have breakfast every morning at the, um, at the hotel, that's, that's included. And then just a quick shot of, of the lobbies. But um, again, very nice. They're, they're both, uh, I, I think right now they're rated at like 4.5 stars or something like that. They're, they're very nice hotels. Um, this is what kind of location of the Amelia, that big green area, that's kind of where uh, the big square is. And then, and then the Parthenon is just beyond that. Um, and, and of course, you know, the, the location of, of the Athens Hotel Marriott. Um, you'll see kind of across the street from a large park, you have the observatory, um, just a quick like two or three minute walk. I mean, very easy to get to. But on Saturday, and really why we're there is to tour and get to see Athens. And, and our tour Saturday is gonna start in the morning after breakfast and it'll go until about 3 p.m. or so. Uh, you'll take your tour around the city. It's gonna take you to, of course, this is a temple of Athena there on the Acropolis, but we'll go to the, the temple of Zeus um, down in, in the major part of the city. See, see the uh, changing of the guard, um, the Olympic Stadium, Constitution Square and their parliament buildings that, that they call it. Um, and then, of course, gosh, we're of course we're we're going to go to the to the Acropolis and, and to the Parthenon. Uh, the the only thing that I'll say about this is that um, while the walk is not hard, it is uneven, and the steps, for example, going up into the Acropolis, the final steps are big marble slabs, and they're uneven and. Some don't have uh, hand handrails, so it's my point is you want to have comfortable shoes on because we're going to be doing a lot of walking and seeing a lot of cool stuff. Um, when you when you kind of this was just personally, I mean, I took a couple of these next pictures, but when you're walking up, this is one of the first things you see, and it's this ancient theater, like at the foot of the Acropolis where the Parthenon is at the very top. I don't know if you can see it there, but as you walk up and around this theater to come to the, you know, to the Parthenon, you're walking up and around and you get to look into this theater, like from above. And it's, I mean, they still use it to this day. They put backdrops and curtains. It's, it's amazing. Um, but really neat just to kind of see, I mean, gosh, if walls could talk, you know, <laughs> uh, the Parthenon, of course, um, will go uh, all around. We can't walk through the Parthenon. We'll go all around. We'll walk through the Temple of Athena, though. Um, the tour is going to take you all around. The one thing that I will say that's in particular about this is that when you when you go up there, that you know, there's no uh, well, there's no trees. I think there's like two, in fact, on on the whole Acropolis, and so that basically the point is there's not a lot of shade. And going at this time of year is ideal because the, you're not baking in the sun in 100 degree, you know, 95 degree weather. You're going to be in like the mid 70s. It's going to be really nice, really comfortable, and you aren't going to be, you know, baking in the sun as you take your tour. Um, of course, they, they light it up at night. It's, it's just beautiful. Um, well, this is a picture of the first time I was there. This is a long time ago now. Um, but all those, all those blocks are actually labeled and numbered, and it's like a big jigsaw puzzle that they're putting the Parthenon back together. It's, it's really quite interesting as your guide kind of takes you around and, and talks to you about all this stuff and shows you it. The one thing that I want to add is that everyone is going to have our whisper systems, which means they all have headphones and, and a little device here that when your tour guide is talking, they're gonna be talking into a small microphone 
and everyone will be able to hear your tour guide just like you were standing right next to them. And this is really to help mitigate. We want to keep people so they can still properly social distance, but still not lose any of the um, any of the you know of the explanations of your guides because that's really, in my opinion, what makes the tour kind of come to life. Um, here, here, here you go. You you've got the Temple of Athena. This is on the Acropolis too, very close. Um, and we'll we'll get to kind of walk through this temple. It's it's amazing. This is where Nike got its swoosh from her. Um, you have, uh, th this is basically the Tavern of the Placa, but, but this evening, what's going to happen is around three o'clock or so, the group will kind of break up. And the tour, you can, if you like, you can take the bus and the tour guide, we, we all go back to the hotel. Or if you want, you can just stay, hang back, and not jump on the bus, and maybe you just want to take a walk around the Plaka district. The Plaka is a 10 minute walk, five minute walk from the Parthenon. It's right there. It's one of the oldest districts in Athens. And it has a lot of outdoor restaurants, a lot of shops, a lot of, you know, touristy things like souvenir shops and things like that, but also, you know, a place where, where locals will go to buy jewelry or shoes or whatever i mean rugs and it's really neat because every shop is there's no box stores it's all individual merchants um selling what they have and it's pretty neat uh but that evening we're gonna have a dinner show and it's gonna be dinner in the placa so so we're gonna take you to a restaurant in the placa and there's entertainment and dancing and of course everybody's eating and drinking too much um and and but, but I mean, it's basically the whole experience. The only thing they didn't do when we were there were like throw the plates on the ground after they were done with them to break up, <laughs> you know. But I mean, everything else, ouzo was flowing, wine, and all the traditional foods. It was a lot of fun. And of course, it's you know, they're all dressed up in traditional Greek. I mean, they even I don't have a picture of it, but they even pulled me on the dance floor because they'll pull people out of the audience and so you can dance with them and they it's really fun. It's engaging. And it's, it's just, uh, it, it kind of caps off. That's your first evening. This is Saturday night, basically. And then Sunday, Sunday, we have a choice. We have folks, if you want, we can take the optional tour to Delphi. It's about $140. Um, or if you want, you can have a free day in Athens. Okay. And so that's really the choice. It's, that's what you have to decide. You want a free day in Athens to just kind of hang out and do your own thing and go explore? Or do you want to take a tour outside of the city and go see a, another extremely famous and, and historical importance of, of, ancient, of ancient Greek history? Uh, Delphi is about two hours from, from Athens. It's in the mountains. And and it'll, and it'll take you this tour. It's going to be all day. We'll leave in the morning after breakfast, and we won't get back until that evening. It, this is here, the, Apollo, the Temple of Apollo that you're looking at. But as you go through, if you notice the columns here, these are the oldest. These are the Doric columns, I believe, or something, the Doric columns. Um, and these are the oldest Greek of, of all the Greek columns. And, and this is basically, you can see the topography here, but as you, you really kind of are taken back to the, to the ancient Greeks, these are where the oracles lived. Uh, the kings of the day would come to Delphi to consult with the oracles before planting their crop, before harvest, before going to war. Um, it, was, it was a very kind of important part of their, of their daily lives. Oh, la, la, last thing I want to mention about Delphi before we jump to the cruise. The tour is going to take you through the ancient city, and it's an ancient city that's literally, you can see the topography here, folks, it's literally built to do a mountainside. So you start at, at one level of the city and literally work your way up, okay, through the city to see it. This is, in my opinion, in terms of physical exertion, this would be your hardest day. This is going to be for people that have to have a walker or people that may have a cane or have a really bad knee, there's gonna be a lot of ups and downs with this. 
So just uh, take it as you will, right? Um, we all know our own limitations, but just to give you kind of a full sense of what the day is gonna be like. In addition to the tour through the ancient city, we're also gonna go to the Delphi Museum. And, and the tour is gonna take us through the museum as well. Of course, the entrance tickets for both the ancient city and the museum are included. So you'll just go, they'll hand, hand you your tickets and everybody will walk in together. Um, it, it is essentially how it works. Uh, then, then come back, right, on Sunday night, grab, grab a bite to eat out in Athens somewhere. And then the next day is on Monday, we're gonna go and, and jump, on the, jump on the cruise ship. Uh, the cruise ships, um, uh, uh, celestial they are um they they are asking folks and and kind of the same requirement with with the vaccinations and things so we, you, you know you want to be basically you want to be fully vaccinated if if you're gonna if you're gonna travel internationally because it's going to be a you're, you're going to eliminate a lot of different hurdles that you'll have to go through otherwise uh <clears throat> Let me just quick deck plan here, just kind of show you an idea of the size of the ship. You'll notice, you know, it doesn't have 20 stories and and hold 3,000 people and, you know, have a golf course and four swimming pools and a rock climbing wall and all that stuff. It doesn't have any of that. It has a couple of really nice restaurants. Uh, but really, this is more viewed, folks. I want you to look at it as more of kind of like a floating hotel, because really, this is all about where we're going and what we're doing when we're off the ship not necessarily the ship itself, okay? But still, the nice thing about it, while we are cruising, they've got live entertainment, stuff to do, activities, and then, and then also, uh, you know, you, you have the drink package as well that's included. So not only, you know, is probably eat too much on the cruise ship, you, you'll also get to drink too much, no. <laughs> but, but, but you'll also get to um, enjoy basically the drink package, which includes Juice, coffee, soda, um, cocktails, uh, beer, wine, um, virtually everything you'd want. The only thing that I will say just for um, full disclosure, right, is that it doesn't include top shelf liquor. So if you wanted a cocktail with, and you wanted the Grey Goose vodka instead of the Well vodka, then you would have to pay additional for that. That's the only difference. Um, but Aside from that, you can kind of see here, here the port schedule, and I'll leave this up for, for a little bit. I can also share this slide with anybody that wants it later. But this is basically kind of gives you an idea of what you're doing. Let me turn that down here. Sorry. What you're doing um, each day. And you'll notice there's some days, actually two days specifically, that you're in two ports on, on a single day. You'll actually be in Turkey on one day and Greece. Um, later that afternoon. So it's, it's really, uh, you know, you're moving around a lot, you're seeing a lot. This kind of talks about that, the drink package that, that I was referring to earlier. Kind of typical inside cabin, typical outside cabin. Guys, and this is your typical balcony suite. I, I just want to say again, this, it, it, if, I don't know if you're able to see on the deck plan, but I believe there's like six balconies on the whole ship. This is not a ship that you want to, you know, have that that balcony experience because truly, folks, you aren't in the ship that you you aren't. You're hardly in your cabin, but you aren't even on the. Sh you're off the ship more than you're on it because you're off off on the island so much, and the cruise time is very short between islands and things like that. So again, in my humble opinion, I don't think. They're very limited for one. They and they're obviously more expensive. In my humble opinion, I don't think it's worth it. Um, an outside cabin or an inside cabin would be more more than adequate. Again, you aren't there that much to. It's not about the ship and the experience. It's about what you're seeing when you're off the ship. Of course, there's a casino. I mentioned there's stuff to do. There's casinos, dance floors. Um, they call them the, the two discos uh, that that they have. Um, a gift shop uh kind of all of it but really our first day when we leave we're going to get boarded onto that ship in the afternoon and we'll leave uh and our first port of call will be mykonos 
and we'll come into Mykonos. Uh, you, we'll get into Mykonos kind of that, that evening, um, usually around 7 or 7.30, something like that. And if you want, you really have your choice. You know, I've been lucky enough, I've done this tour a few times, and you can have dinner in Mykonos at one of the restaurants if you want, or if you want, you can have dinner on the ship and then just go explore Mykonos. Whatever you want to do, but my point is, is, is you're getting into Mykonos right at around dinner time, or it might be a little late dinner, but you'll still have the chance to eat off the ship, eat in Mykonos, if that's something that that you want to do. You know, the 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 the, 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 um, the little island of Mykonos, it's really famous for its windmills and and its and its colorful uh, doors and and windows and things like that. Kind of its white whitewashed uh, buildings. Kind of this was, you know, it's just, you walk around and it's kind of just idyllic, you know? Um, this this is just a quick shot of, of the bay there when I was there. And and this is, again, this was, I was there in, in a, well, in, in early November, the first time I was there. So this that isn't quite representative of what the sky would look like, but there's, my point is I wanted to show you lots of restaurants, lots of things open, and places to go and things to see. So all of that's ready to go for you there in Mykonos. When we leave Mykonos, the, the ship you'll, I think it leaves around 11, 11 o'clock at night or something. When we leave, they're gonna sail from Mykonos to Turkey. Okay, and, and we're gonna get into a, a port called Kusadasi. And from Kusadasi is where we can go to Ephesus. And Ephesus guys, it's, Gosh, if you haven't been there, it's it just you can't help but just kind of stand in awe. It's it's truly amazing. It's one of the uh, in its heyday, it was one of the largest cities in the world. Um, the only one larger, it was the largest city in in this part of the world. Uh, Rome was the only one that was larger. Um, from, from what our guide said, and we'll talk about kind of how, how they know that. But this is the library of Celsius. Um, they've kind of reconstructed it. And you're gonna literally walk through this ancient city and your tour is gonna take you all through Ephesus. It's, it's amazing. Um, the, the advancement of what this city was, was incredible. I know these are toilets and you're like, well, gosh, what's so advanced about that? This this was so, what, what was so interesting is they actually have clay pipes that they put together and they've separated, you know, their wastewater from the drinking water and the, and, and the rich people that lived in the city of Ephesus had running water uh, that were running into their homes um, and it's all done with these pipes, which is fascinating to me. Uh, but anyway, very ahead of its time. Again, you, you have the Library of Celsius there. Very ahead of its time. Very, uh, and they're still uncovering things every year. More mosaics, more whatever. It's it's amazing. Um, this is you'll notice. Look at if you look in the background there, you'll see the amphitheater, and that amphitheater uh, holds um, about twenty thousand people. And and in the day. Amphitheaters were typically built to hold around 10% of the city's total population. So that's how they figure that Ephesus was around 200,000 people or so in its, in its biggest, you know, in its heyday. And that's, I mean, that's unthinkable in, in those times. You know, it's, wow. <laughs> you know, refrigeration, what? Um, later, that, later that day, okay, so we'll be in Ephesus. And, you know, if we follow the biblical story, you know, the Romans kicked John out of Ephesus and banished him to this island to basically go die at. And it was this island of Patmos. And, and he went on, John went on to write the, the last book in the Bible um, called Revelations in, in, in Patmos, in this cave. And so we'll go to Patmos and there's, it's like $80. There's an optional tour that if you want to take and it'll take you through the grotto. It's a cave um, where John wrote Revelations. It's 
cells kind of chills up your spine. It's pretty neat. Um, you have to picture it without the wall, without the gold chandelier and, you know, the, the confessional booth in the back and all of that. If you look to the right, you see the rock. And that was the opening of the cave. And then you walk down that and that's where he lived. And that's where it was. And it's so it's they've made this kind of shrine around it, but it's it's um it's humbling, no doubt. Uh, and then of course the tour takes you from there. We go up to St. John's Monastery that they built in, I think it was like a thousand AD or something. And uh, oh yeah, eleven eighty eight. There we go. Um, and and anyway, famous for its frescoes. Its frescoes are you know, world famous, um, reminds me a lot of Italy, um, frankly, but, um, and then, you know, from there you go to the very top and then you have just, well, the view of, the view of the Aegean, um, it's, the blue of the Aegean is just, it's something to behold, no doubt. Uh, we'll leave Patmos that evening, really, it's, uh, I think it's around 11 or 11 o'clock or so, and from there sail, to Rhodes, to, to the uh, medieval island of Rhodes. And we'll, uh, we'll come into Rhodes. And the neat thing about this is um, there's gonna be an included tour, but we're gonna be in Rhodes all day. So we have an included tour that takes us down to Lindos, but there's also gonna be free time to explore the ancient city as well. Um, your ship, what makes it so neat is probably 500 feet or so from where your ship's gonna be docked, is you'll walk through this medieval wall where you know they have garrisons on each side and you could just imagine what it was like um you know in the 16 1500s uh but you know this is where the the crusaders that took the sea route um would kind of congregate the christian crusaders to then make the eventual leap to the to jerusalem into the holy land um Just kind of a quick contrast between the new and the old. But you know, our, our tour of Lindos is gonna take us to the Acropolis of Lindos. Gonna take us to here kind of, but it's it literally sits like 400 feet above the sea. It's quite large. And, and when you are standing on it and looking around, there's a 360 unobstructed view. It's, it's amazing. And to give you guys kind of a better idea, this tries to give you a better idea of the Acropolis of Lindos just to kind of show you just how high it was. And, and again, back to kind of biblical stories, this is where Paul uh, was, was stranded and was shipwrecked, right, in, in the Bay of Lindos. And, and, uh, and so this, this has that. Also, the Island of Rhodes, it's also famous for having the Colossus of Rhodes, right, that giant ancient statue that straddled the harbor. That's there too. Um, not the Colossus, but certainly the, the ancient harbor, uh, your cruise ship does not, you know, cannot dock there, obviously. Uh, but it's within a short walk, um, maybe 15 minutes of where your cruise ship's docked, you can walk to the old harbor of Rhodes. The, the, the next day, really, again, we're, we're in Rhodes all day. So that next day is when we're going to wake up and we have a choice. We have free time in Heraklion, which is a really cool city, Crete. It's known for its olive oil, and you're. And this is the largest city of Crete. Um, or if you want, you can take again. It's like eighty dollars, uh, but there's an optional tour to take to the Palace of Knossos. And Knossos, I mean, it. God, it predates the pyramids. You know, it is super old. Uh, it's one of the oldest civilizations that they found in Europe, um, and it's. But this is where, like, the Minotaur lived, right? Where the mythical creature, the Minotaur, that he lived in Knossos, in the Palace of Knossos. So anyway, all of that to say that if you're interested in the ancient Greek history of things, this tour might interest you. But if you're like, gosh, you know, I've, I just never heard of it, don't really want to, I want some free time to go shopping or do what I want to do, then I would say, don't take this tour and go in and just go enjoy yourself um, in Heraklion. Uh, just kind of this is as you come into the to the king's chamber 
this next picture is horrible, guys, so I apologize. But this is before cell phones had good cameras. But there's a little throne there um, that, that the king would sit on with, with benches all around. And this was the throne room where all important decisions were made. But beyond that case, okay, so we're in Crete that morning. And we'll, we'll leave that morning, have lunch on the cruise ship, and sail into Santorini. And there's going to be an included tour of Santorini as well. So that's up to you. You can go on the included tour and, and, and there's going to be a tender boat that, that take you off. Here are some, some beautiful views. But the ship literally comes up around the caldera here and pulls up. And then how we get off are with, next one, here we go, are with these tender boats. There's nowhere to dock these ships. So smaller boats come up and people get onto these ships, unload, and then they take you ashore. So we'll have two, two, we'll have two ways. This boat was going to the place where you can ride the donkeys or take the chairlift. It's a gondola up to the top, not a chair. And, or you can take the, the other way, it's just out, out of this picture is where you'll take the tour. And then they'll take you to another place. You'll get on a bus and then the bus takes you up and around and then takes you a tour of the city. If you just want free time in Santorini to just do your own thing and explore, you know, um, you know, our tours aren't required. You don't need to go on. It's completely up to you. And so based on your judgment is, is what you can do. If you look here, the reason why I've had this picture up so long, there's a off to the left of the boat, there's a zigzag road that goes all the way to the top. That's not for the buses. Though that's for the donkeys. Your donkeys walk that and you ride those things all the way up to the top. Just don't ever ride the donkey down. Um, you can ride them up, but never down. Or if you look to the left of that, you'll see large, what look like large, almost telephone poles. And they are, they're, or power poles. They're part of the gondola system. And again, you can take the donkeys up to the top. And I have a funny story that, about those things that I won't tell you now, but um, you know, you, you can choose donkey or gondola. They, they, they cost the exact, exact same. And if you don't take the included tour, this is what you're gonna have to choose to do. You'll take the uh, uh, ride in, the, the tender boat in, and then you'll have to choose. Do I want to pay seven? I think it's seven or eight euros to ride the donkey, or seven eight euros to ride the gondola. And then these gondolas hold six people. You get on them, you sit in, and it's a uh, less than ten minutes, and you're at the top. Um, very safe, very modern. Um, but this is a this is another you know your other option if you don't take the, the, the included tour. Um, the tour of Santorini though, it's gonna take you all around uh, the, the island, take, take you to Thera, um, the, and, and I'll have both of the old villages there um, in Santorini. But you know, it's guys, so let me just back up really quick to this picture here. So the, the sun sets over this caldera. So, so this is where people always talk about the sunsets of Santorini. They're beautiful. You all, and, and what's nice is you're going to be there in time for that. And, and the sunsets on this side, if you're on the tour, the tour will stop and let everybody, and of course, everybody's going to take their pictures and everything. But for those not on the tour, just walking around exploring, you want to make sure you get to the top or, uh, or someplace in a picturesque spot before the sun goes down. Because we're gonna get there well before the sun goes down, but we're gonna be there well into the night. I think the ship leaves at like 11 p.m. So you'll have time for both. My point is, is, is that you just wanna get to the top because this is, the, this is really why a lot of folks take those pictures. You know, you see all those beautiful pictures and this is where it's at, so. Um, here, I'll, sorry, I'll keep keep scrolling now. Um, again, last last kind of picture there, but you'll see that big white building there at the base area 
of this picture. And that's where the gondolas are coming in and out of where people can get on and off. Um, anyway, I just, I just love, just love this place. It's a, it, it's a beautiful place. You really can't take a bad picture. That's why I love it. Um, when, when we, so, so we'll be in Santorini basically that evening until, like I said, around 11 PM or so the ship will sail overnight. And, and we'll get into, uh, it'll sail, sail overnight and we'll get into Praeus, which is a port city for Athens. When we get into, into town, our, our uh, uh, come on, Chris, our tour guide and our bus companies are going to be there waiting for you. And off we go. We're going to pick you up there at the port and literally kind of take you around, which is, will be our last day of touring. And we're going to go to the theater of Epidaurus, which is, which is this. And this place is world famous for its acoustics. And this guy was singing. He was thought he was on like American Idol or something. He's not a very good singer, <laughs> but you could, you could hear his voice carry. Um, and it was amazing. I mean, you know, that's the, that's the amphitheater there. And it's just, you know, this is completely original too. They found this under a landslide, which is just fascinating. It's like third century BC. Um, very old and just, in my opinion, amazing. Um, <clears throat> you leave there, Epidaurus, it's a short drive. Um, and we're going to go to the Mycenaean ruins. And this is where the kingdom of Mycenae was. This is where King Agamemnon, he was like, if you watch that movie Troy with Brad Pitt and Orlando Bloom and all those guys, that king that started the Trojan War is King Agamemnon or King Agamemnon, however you pronounce his name. And, and this was his kingdom, his city state. And, and anyway, and so you have uh, the tour through Mycenae. It's, it's amazing kind of the, the topography and where they set the city up. But the defensive positions and the walls and, and all of the stuff that you learn is fascinating about, about this ancient, ancient civilization. This is a, and then there's, well, it's, it's just amazing. Um, literally, and then we'll leave there and then just less than a mile down the road, you have this huge thing, which is, is King Agamemnon's tomb. And this is his tomb where it's, I mean, it's, it's amazing that you don't, you, you can go inside it. So this is inside, they've, they've sealed off the burial chamber, right? You can't get in there, but this is, they found it, you know, um, a couple hundred years ago. And it's just unbelievable that here it is. And this was built and guys, it's a time of the Trojan war. I mean, like mythical stuff. And this is the stuff that they were building. When you see the size of these stones, I mean, they're bigger than people. It's it's amazing. I don't under anyway. It's fascinating. Um, and then and then of course, leaving, heading back to Athens, we're literally going to drive over the Corinth Canal. This is not our cruise ship. Our cruise ship does not go through the Corinth Canal. Um, but this just to give you an idea of just how how tight these ships are when they go through it. Um, they'll talk about kind of what it does in terms of shipping efficiencies and why it was built. Um, even in modern ships, it takes like um, several days off the shipping route from the Adriatic over to like into the Aegean um, is what this canal does. So it's, again, it's, it's, um, it's, it's all about efficiency and, and that's why it was built. But if you'll notice, no locks, it's just a straight through. It's not like the Panama. Um, you go straight through and it's always full of water. Just another, another shot of Athens there. You know, you don't realize when you're in the city just how close you are to the sea. And, and on a clear day from the Acropolis, you can see the sea. It's, it's, it's really neat. Um, but anyway, Athens, it's a city of about eight, 8 million people. Um, and they have a building ordinance. And if you, when you walk around the city, you'll notice that there's not any buildings over, I believe it's 10 stories. And it's, so no buildings can be higher than the Acropolis. So basically you can be anywhere in the city and you'll always get a view of the Acropolis from above. Um, and of course that's on purpose. It's pretty neat. 
Uh, that next day, or really kind of that, that really would, would end the tour. We're going to come back to the same hotel that you were at the previous three nights, get checked in, get comfortable. That next day is when we're going to uh, be taken to the airport um, in the morning and, and have, the, have the flight home. One thing I forgot to mention was the Athens uh, airport is not in the city center of like Las Vegas, for example, or something like that. Um, this is about 50 minutes, a little less than an hour or so outside the city. So just for what it's worth, um, so, so you know that it's, uh, you know, we will leave. And of course you need to get there a little early. So it'll be an early morning um, call and we'll, you know, of course the transportation, all of that's included to get you to the airport and everybody checked in as well. Um, all in all, 10 days. Um, it, it, it's a 10 day program. Um, and it's and with, with eight nights, uh, four nights in Athens and four nights on a, um, on a cruise ship. So can I, should, can we open it up for questions or would that be appropriate or do you want to? Absolutely. Yes. I'd, um, I'd be happy to give my email address and y'all sure. could email me questions. Sure. If, that, so, if that's helpful. Yep. Um, so I think Chris is going to go ahead and put his email address in the, into the chat for anyone who would like to, um, you know, contact him on a, you know, one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, if anyone has any questions um, for, for Chris about, about the trip or has um, any comments or anything else they would like to add, please let us know. And uh, it was a really, looks like an amazing trip. I am very much happy. I, I am hoping that, you know, um, that everyone will be able to come and it'll be an absolutely beautiful excursion. It's one of my favorite. Places. I do have one question. Sure. Yes, can you go over the payment terms and cancellations and that kind of thing? Sure. Um, I, I, I can't talk about dates. I'm sorry, because I don't, I, unfortunately, I don't have your brochure in front of me, but I'd be happy to talk about it. If you want to call me or, or, um, or, or we can go, go through it by email. But, but what I can say is that, um, when you, when you make a, um, a reservation, uh, then, then you're basically, you're going to be contacted by your operations department and you can have a, a, a choice really of, um, insurance options. There'll be, uh, choices for, first of all, I should mention, just let me back up everyone that's enrolled is going to be included in a post coverage. It's a really basic insurance option, but it's a post coverage deal where if you, once you're over there and something happens, God forbid you get hurt or your trip gets interrupted or your bag gets lost, whatever, all that there's insurance for it. And that's covered. There's two options for you though, for cancellation folks can buy what I would refer to as your traditional uh, your traditional coverage, which would mean if you have any kind of medical reason or any kind of outstanding reason, verifiable insurance or reason to cancel, then it's, you can, then there's the other policy, which is you can cancel for any reason. I mean, if you have a bad hair day, you don't want to go, just wake up, not in the mood to travel, you can cancel and, and there's no, and then that's available as a policy for you as well too. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, we, we have one question about, uh, mileage and, and, and can, you know, can you purchase your own plane ticket and, and all that kind of stuff? Um, your, uh, your, your mileage, you, you, first of all, you absolutely can, um, you can use your mileage if, if you have a lot of points or miles or something to, to use for your, uh, air, airline and basically to get you to and from no problem. We will deduct. Uh, of course, that's money. So we would, there would be a discount off of your trip and we would not book the air for you. I don't know offhand that would be, but I can definitely get that for you. I want to say though, it's not, it's not what you might expect. It's not what's going to be like the market rate that you see on Expedia or something. These are group contracts. So the credit amount back to you might be like 
six, seven hundred dollars, not like a thousand or something like that. So just to for for just again full transparency. Um, but you, for using points for a hotel, that can't be done. Um, that cannot. Uh, but certainly for your flights, it absolutely can. And 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 even if if you have upgrade questions and things like that, you can work with our ops team individually, and they can help work out. Uh, you know how to use your points if you want to use them for an upgrade or just your own plane ticket altogether. Uh, there, there, and then last question, there is not a minimum age uh, for this trip. Uh, you don't, um, you can be, you know, 10 or 11 with and going with your parents if you want. Uh, you know, they, they will uh, at, at all of the places. Um, I mentioned the, the restaurant that we go to in Athens as a group um, and the different restaurants in uh, on the ship as well, there aren't any age requirements there. So they could participate in, in everything. Um, the one thing that I would say is that they wouldn't be able to or participate in the drink package <laughs> and things like that. But that's, I think that kind of goes without saying. So um, are there, uh, oh, and I I'm sorry, would we be able to change a flight if so? Yeah. So that's that's a great question this is basically asking <clears throat> can we change a flight could we stay a little longer kind of customize the trip in any way and the answer is absolutely um you can customize it on the front end or on the back end so if you want to stay a few extra days in athens and and fly home from athens a few days later no problem if you want to fly home from rome two weeks later no problem. Whatever you want to do, that can be arranged. The one thing that I would say is that just so, again, so there's no surprises, is that generally, so what you'd be responsible for when you do that is in terms of costs would be the change of, of the, the, the difference in the airfare, right? And the change fee. So usually the change fees are usually between like 100 and uh, well, I should say about 150 to $250 on average. Then you have the difference in airfare. So why I say this is because if you wanna fly home from Athens and, and, you know, and the city of Athens, you may wanna fly home from Budapest, let's say, or I don't know, I'm just guessing. Um, well, Budapest, chances are, it's gonna be more expensive to fly out of Budapest than it is Athens. So there would be a more expensive, right? So you'd be have that that difference in airfare plus the uh, plus the change fee. If you just want to fly out of Athens a few days later, you know, or a week later, or whatever you want to do, then really you're only looking at the change fee, you know. And 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 if there is a difference in airfare, it's it's nominal. It's not it's not a lot. Um, so. If you're looking at costs and just want to spend more time in Athens, that would be your best, your most cost-effective way to do it. Um, sorry, there's one, one last one. Um, so the great question, does the tour package include tips to your guide? Uh, no, ma'am, it doesn't. That would be your, your guides um, would, you know, tips to your guides would be completely optional and up to you um there there's uh there's recommendations for it um but for example there's there's like a tour manager that comes that meets you at the airport and is with you from the time that from the time they meet you at the airport they even go on the cruise ship with you and they're on the cruise ship with you to make sure answering questions all of that and then when you get off the cruise ship they're with you there as well all of that. Now that's called your tour manager. There's the, the, the suggested amount to tip them is between four and five euros a day. In addition to that, you have local guides that may, you know, for example, when you're on the cruise ship, when you come into Turkey, there's going to be a tour guide in Turkey that's provided by the cruise line. And that guide's going to be with you for four hours. You know, maybe you give them one euro 
or maybe you maybe you don't like him or maybe you loved him and you want to give him five years again it's all up to you and 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 whatever you want um to do there but just just it doesn't include the the, the tips to the tour guides it does include all of the taxes um airline taxes and port taxes for for your crew so i don't want you to think that 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 there's going to be some additional taxes somewhere it does include it's kind of all encompassing in other words your your tour um excuse me your port taxes as well as uh, your air taxes and even uh your fuel surcharges as well it includes all of that And Chris, they've asked that looks like we have a um, request for an information sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and direct you to our travel page as well as, um, and then I'll also post a PDF in the, um, in the, in the chat. Direct me to, to your, here, let, let me, um, I am right now, everyone, I'm emailing you or emailing, excuse me. I'm <laughs> dropping in the chat box, my email. Okay. So, so, so my email there is. So please feel free to, um, you know, if you have any questions directly, uh, you know, don't hesitate, just reach out. And of course I'll do whatever I can for you to help get those answered. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, who, who I is eligible for this question? Trip? Um, it might be pertaining to membership. You don't have to be a chamber member to participate in the trip. Yes, it's 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 open. It's open to anyone and everyone. Um, what one thing I will say too, just since we're all here and talking, but um, is that if you may have a friend that lives in, I don't know, Denver or something, and they want to fly with you, and you have another one that lives in Minneapolis, whatever you want to do. My point is, is we can take people from all over the country and get them in. Um, they don't all have to originate, you know from the Dulles airport. Y'all don't have to fly from Dulles. They can fly from their home airport and then meet you in route or meet you in country. Mm -hmm. So that's an option. All right, I'm gonna share also another file here. And All right, and so let me show you some information here. Um, did anyone have any other questions? other questions all right i think that um wraps us up for today i'm actually going to go ahead and put lynn song um information in the chat as well she's actually the um chamber travel representative and if you have any questions you can reach uh, specific to anything else you can reach out to chris here or to lynn all right, thank you all so much for joining us today. And we hope to see you as soon as we can. All right, um, thank you, Chris, so much for being here. And um, if you need anything, let me know. Otherwise, um, everyone have a wonderful day. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for coming. Bye-bye. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Thank you.